Assalamu alaikum. Uh, dear students, this is me, Ati Khaymat. Today we are going to study the last topic of chapter number 15 and uh, that is thermoregulation. Therm means heat. Thermoregulation is basically the regulation of heat within the body. Thermoregulation is the maintenance of internal temperature within a narrow range that allows cells to function efficiently. For example, the human body has a temperature range of 36.1 to 37.2. So the human body must maintain the internal body temperature within this range of 36.1 to 37.2 centigrade in order to allow the cells to function efficiently. The body works to balance the amount of heat loss to maintain stable internal temperature. Now usually the organisms particularly the animals they have the problem of heat loss. So the animals must uh, balance the amount of heat loss in order to maintain a stable internal temperature for various biochemical reactions. Now why this uh, optimum temperature is required? Why this uh, uh, range of temperature is required? This is basically required for various enzymes uh, which catalyze various biochemical processes within the body. The enzymes uh, work uh, under uh, an optimum range of temperature. So, for example, the human body temperature range is 36.1 till 37.2 centigrade. So, this is the optimum range for the human enzymes. If uh, the temperature is colder or warmer than this range, then the enzymes uh, will not properly work and they will ultimately stop working if the, temp if the temperature falls far more below or if it rises uh, far more above the uh, normal range. What happens basically that uh, if the temperature uh, uh, falls uh, below the lower limit of human range that is 36.1. So slowly and gradually the enzyme activity will be reduced. And what is the reason behind that? That is that the ectocytes of enzymes will slowly and gradually close down. So, if uh, the temperature falls far more below, so ultimately the enzyme will stop working because the enzymes become inactive. And uh, similarly, is the case of high temperature is there that if the temperature rises uh, above the upper limit that is 37.2 centigrade in case of humans, so the ectocytes uh, will change their shape uh, and uh, the enzyme activity will slow down. If uh, the temperature rises for more than the 37.2, so ultimately the shape of the ectocytes of the enzymes will be destroyed and the, enzyme, uh, the enzymes will denature and ultimately the uh, enzyme activity will completely stop. So that's why an optimum range of temperature is required within the body so that uh, the various enzymes work properly to carry out various biochemical processes of the life which are vital for the survival of the organism. We will move towards the teaching points. Thermoregulation in animals. Animals can be classified uh, based of an ability to maintain constant body temperature as uh, poikilotherms or homeotherms. These are the two categories of animals. 
Folklotherms are those animals which are unable to maintain their body temperature within a narrow range, within a narrow limits using physiological mechanisms. They cannot maintain their body temperature within the narrow limits because they cannot uh, control the temperature through their various physiologic mechanisms, the various biochemical processes occurring inside their bodies. So, uh, their examples are invertebrates, fishes, amphibians and reptiles. These are the organisms which cannot maintain their body temperature within a narrow limits or within a narrow range. That's why they uh, change their temperature with uh, the environmental temperature. The second category of animals that is the homeotherms. Homeotherms are those organisms, those animals which maintain their body temperature within a narrow range through various physiological mechanisms. For example, birds and mammals. These are also known as the warm-blooded animals. While the folklotherms are known as cold-blooded animals. So, homeotherms can maintain their body temperature within a narrow range through various physiological mechanisms, through various biochemical processes. The examples of these uh, organisms are birds and mammals. These two can maintain their body temperature within a narrow range. Now, animals are also classified on the basis of source of body heat. And uh, there are two categories. They are either ectotherms or endotherms. Ectotherms are those animals which produce metabolic heat at a very low level. Their metabolism is comparatively slow. They produce metabolic heat at a very low level. And uh, that small amount of heat which is produced through the low level of metabolism that is also exchanged quickly with the environment. So that's why their body cool uh, to encounter this problem, they rely more on heat derived from the environment to raise their body temperature. For example, most invertebrate fishes, amphibians and reptiles, they basically um, regulate their body temperature with respect to their environment. Endotherms are those animals which uh, have high metabolic rate and they produce uh, high amount of heat uh, through their metabolism. And uh, this heat is produced as a byproduct during metabolism in muscles or by the actions of hormones that increase the metabolic rate. For example, uh, birds and mammals. So birds and mammals, these are endotherms, they have internal physiological mechanisms to produce heat and to maintain their body temperature within a narrow range. They uh, produce heat through metabolism in their muscles whenever there is muscular activity. So uh, energy is consumed and uh, heat is produced. So that heat is utilized to uh, regulate the body temperature to warm the body. Similarly, by the actions of hormones, they increase their metabolic rate to produce more heat to maintain the body temperature within a range and uh, which hormones are basically involved. So, the thyroid gland produces hormones. So, those hormones, thyroid hormones as well as the adrenaline and noradrenaline hormones. In other words, these are also known as epinephrine and norepinephrine as well as the thyroid hormones. They are basically involved uh, in uh, the increase of metabolism rate to produce more heat to maintain the body temperature within a normal range. Now thermoregulation in humans. 
In humans, the thermoregulatory center that is located in hypothalamus, which is located in the brain, and uh, it acts as a thermostat. Uh, it can detect the temperature of the blood passing through it. It also detects the temperature change which is uh, detected by the skin. So, whenever there is a temperature change in the environment, so the skin have receptors, the thermoreceptors, the skin will detect that uh, change in the temperature and that message is conveyed to the hypothalamus. And along with it, Whenever the internal body temperature rises, so the blood temperature will rise and that blood when flows to various parts of the body, so it will reach to the brain and whenever it flows through the hypothalamus, so the hypothalamus uh, detects the temperature change. So hypothalamus is basically the temperature regulatory center uh, within the human body which detects change in the temperature and if the hypothalamus found some uh, uh, variation so uh, it will uh, take some corrective measure to restore the body temperature to the normal range and uh, those uh, corrective measures are basically two sweating or shivering whenever the body temperature rises above the normal temperature means the body is overwhelmed so sweating will occur to release the extra heat in the form of sweat to evaporate the extra heat in the form of water vapors or shivering will occur if the body is over cold so in that case shivering will occur and muscular activity will be created that is known as shivering reflex to produce more heat to warm the body to um, restore the normal body temperature when we encounter a particularly warm or cold environment, temperature receptor in the skin inform the hypothalamus. We have already discussed this point. They also stimulate the higher voluntary centers of the brain. Whenever the higher voluntary centers of the brains are uh, stimulated, uh, so voluntary actions, muscular activity is performed by the body. And that muscular activity basically produce heat because muscles use energy and heat is produced which uh, restore the body temperature to the normal. Now we will discuss two conditions, hyperthermia and hypothermia. Hyperthermia is uh, the body temperature above 37 centigrade. Whenever the body temperature rises above 37 centigrade, so there are two main physiological responses to this uh, warmer situation of the body. Vasodilation will occur and sweating will occur. Now vasodilation is basically the expansion of blood capillaries which uh, lie just beneath the epidermis of the skin. Epidermis is the upper layer of the skin. Below that layer there are blood capillaries. So whenever the body temperature rises, so these capillaries will expand. As a result, uh, the internal diameter will be increased and as a result more blood will flow to the skin and more heat will be released in, uh, in the form of sweating. So there is more flow of blood in the blood capillaries of the skin. Now what the sweat glands spread sweat over the skin. Evaporation of sweat from the skin carries heat from the blood thus produces cooling effect. So whenever there is hypothermia, so two changes will occur. Vasodilation and sweating will occur. Vasodilation will increase the diameter of the blood capillaries under the upper layer of the skin, the epidermis and ultimately more blood will flow to the skin and the sweating will cause uh, evaporation of that heat from the body as a result the heat will be released from the body and the body will restore the normal range of temperature. Hypothermia is the condition when the body temperature is below 37 centigrade. In this case the shivering reflex occur. Spasmodic contraction of the muscle is called shivering. A brief irregular uh, bursts of contractions are known as shivering. 
Shivering reflex is a reflex in which uh, the body muscles spontaneously contract and relax. So in this process basically the heat is generated and that heat is utilized to warm the body to restore the normal body temperature. This contraction produces heat which helps to raise the body temperature. Vasoconstriction is uh, another process uh, which uh, raise the body temperature. Uh, this is basically conservation process in which the internal heat will be conserved so that uh, minimum amount of heat is lost and much more amount of heat is conserved within the body. Vasoconstriction reduces blood flow to the skin. Now vasoconstriction means the constriction of the blood capillaries below the epidermis, underneath the epidermis, the upper layer of the skin. So whenever the body is over cold, so vasoconstriction will occur. So the diameter of the capillaries under the skin will be reduced. As a result, less blood flow will occur to the skin. As a result, less heat will be lost from the body. So in this way, heat will be conserved. Pilo erection literally means erection of the skin hair. It traps air in the erected hair which is insulator for the heat. This is another mechanism. Whenever the body is over cold, so vasoconstriction will occur. The blood supply to the skin uh, will be reduced. And uh, pilo erection will occur. The skin hair will become erect. So whenever the skin hairs become erect, so in between, suppose these are two hairs, in between these two hairs, this space, this basically contain the air. And this air is insulated for heat. So from the underlying skin, the heat will be not released in that case. So the erection of skin hair will occur. That is the pilo erection. As a result, the heat is trapped in between the hairs and that air acts as an insulator. And as a result, the heat is not lost from the skin and the heat is preserved within the body. Increased metabolic rate is also a physiological response to cold. This is another response that uh, whenever the body is over cold, so the um, thyroid hormones and the epinephrine and norepinephrine hormones will be released, which will increase the metabolic rate of the body. As a result, more heat will be generated and the body will restore the normal range of temperature. The process of thermoregulation is shown here diagrammatically, homeostasis and temperature control. Normal body temperature that is 37 centigrade or 98.6 Fahrenheit. Body temperature rises above normal whenever the body temperature rises above the normal temperature Nervous system signals dermal blood vessels, dermal blood vessels or the network of capillaries beneath the epidermis. So nervous system signals the dermal blood vessels to dilate and sweat glands to secrete. So two uh, changes occur as a result of uh, the nervous signals that uh, dermal blood vessels they dilate the network of capillaries beneath the skin dilate so diameter increases so blood flow to the skin increases secondly the sweat glands uh, secrete sweat so as a result the extra heat is removed from the body body heat is lost to its surrounding and as a result, the body temperature drops towards normal and the normal body temperature is attained. Now, another case is uh, when the body becomes colder than the normal. So, whenever the body temperature drops below normal, so what will happen then? Nervous system signals dermal blood vessels to constrict whenever the body temperature 
drops below the normal level so that signal is transmitted to the brain to the hypothalamus and as a result the nervous system means the hypothalamus the brain signals dermal blood vessels to constrict in this case the blood vessel will constrict and uh, as a result the diameter of the blood vessels will become uh, lower as a result uh, what will happen the blood supply to the skin will be lowered simultaneously another signal will be given to the sweat glands and the sweat glands will remain inactive so in this way sweating will not occur heat will be not lost and the blood supply to the skin will be reduced so as a result more heat will be conserved inside the body so the body will uh, regain its uh, uh, normal temperature a body temperature continues to drop nervous system signal muscles to contract involuntarily so as a result the shivering reflex will occur muscle activity generate body heat the shivering reflex will occur shivering will occur and the muscular activity will generate heat as a result of both these processes in this process the heat is conserved in this process the heat is generated so as a result body temperature rises toward normal and that signal is again detected by the hypothalamus so in this way the temperature is controlled and the normal body temperature is maintained this is all about today's lecture uh, see you next time with the new lecture take care allah hafiz